Hey, it's Laura. And I just wanted to give you another update. Some people have been asking what's going on with my process um, because I will have you know that getting rejected on the first round of submissions does not end my determination and resolve to get this book on the shelves, the book called Where Daddy Is. So here's the deal. I just chatted with my agent. We had a Zoom call. I have the same fake background. Uh, I hope you like it. I used to have a computer too old to do fake Zoom backgrounds. Seriously, so old. And so I have to like use them, even though I know they're kind of outdated by now, but it's fine. Anyway, I um, we have a plan. So I made some edits to the story. I honestly, like I'll tell you, I did not think that making more edits was possible. I felt like this story was revised to the utmost perfection, to every last word being exactly where it needed to be. Every last feeling being ev evoked by those words was just on point. And it was close, but I made edits. I revised some structure, um, just the way things were placing made some things more uh, succinct because in picture books, it really is important. And I'd recently read this somebody, some picture book author, I wish I could give her credit right now, but she talks about how when you're writing picture books, you take paragraphs and make them sentences and you take sentences and if you can turn them into phrases and if you can, then you turn them into words. So I spliced, I chopped, not really spliced. I took away. So I, I cut, I condensed some things. Um, even I played around a little bit with some of the formatting of how it was actually written on paper. Um, with picture books, you really don't want to have big, long chunks of text, because if you think about reading a picture book that you actually want to read to your children, it is, it is quite, um, it's a lot more, uh, shortened it's just shortened it's not big long chunks of text which is kind of what I just said <laughs> earlier but it also matters how you're formatting it so um, you want to kind of submit that at least that's what I've been told your picture books in that kind of format um, some critique partners that I've met still send me picture books with long sentences so I help them format it because you can still have a complete sentence in a picture book, obviously, but maybe you're not going to say like, he was the most amazing circus man you've ever seen all in one line. You might say he was, and then, you know, next line, the most amazing next line circus man, next line you've ever seen. So you can see I was kind of poetic. You're like packing a punch with each part of the sentence. So this is part of what I did. I kind of just, I, I made the ending. I, I changed it like that. So it's one sentence at the end. I didn't cut that end. It was perfect. It is still perfect as is, but I did, I made it three, three lines instead of one. I hope I'm making any sense. So then I sent, I read it to my agent and they cried Again, they cried the first time they read it and then they hired me as a client and they cried again reading it. So I am only smiling, not because I like to make people cry, but naturally picture books should have heart. They do not always, maybe some are just, you know, all jokes, which is still an emotion that's still heart. But um, this, this story is heavier. It's um, dealing with a tough topic and um my agent has labeled me their dark author. <laughs> so they kind of apologize. Sorry, I'm like, you're the dark one. When these publishers are asking for dark, I'm going to send yours. I'm like, I guess that's me, Laura Stead, the dark author. <laughs> it's just ironic because if you knew me, like I don't even, I don't watch rated R movies. I don't like PG-13 movies often, like violence, all of that stuff. Like I just have to close my eyes and plug my ears. Like my husband loves to watch all the action movies. And I'm like, oh, just like, can we fast forward this part? And he's like, it's the battle scene. I'm like, exactly. So it's just funny to me that now I'm like the dark, the dark. <laughs> and um, anyway, what am, what am I thinking? So that's my next step. We're going to send it out in a little bit. And I talked to my agent about their process there. It's not like tomorrow they'll send it out. It's going to be a little while and that's okay. And I understand now why. And um, 
you just, you want to, you know, take it slow. You want to see, get some feedback, see what these people thought. Um, you don't want to overdo it so that at the end of the day, you've already sent it to all of the publishers in the world. And now you have no one to turn to and you realize you need some revisions or there's something missing. And if you kind of take it chunk by chunk, send it to a few a handful at once, then you can get that feedback. You can gather that and then make changes if necessary, change approaches if necessary, but that's okay. And I talked to my agent about the next book I want to send out once this one gets an offer. And so we have that in place and they think it's going to be great. And I am excited about it too. And finally, my co-writer and I on my novel, our novel, are super close for completion of our first draft. So I talked to Joyce about what that might look like as far as um, sending that to them and um, would they want to read it? And like, should I get a professional editor before I send it over? And they said, no, send it to me and I'll give you feedback and I'll tell you what I think. And I'm like, yes, because I love my agent and they are very editorial. And um, I just found out I have 14 novels published of their own. So just highly prolific and smart and amazing. And I love them and I'm grateful to have an agent. And I have to remember that because sometimes it's hard. Like I feel discouraged that I didn't get um you know this book take an offer we thought we would get multiple offers this round and we got none <laughs> like ugh. so that's just definitely not multiple offers but it's hard to sometimes I just feel like well then what's the point like this isn't going the way I wanted it to go and I'm just I have to remember I have an agent and that's huge and they are rooting for me and they believe in my story and they told me just today that I'm a very good writer and that they totally see this book going somewhere. Like we have no doubt. It's just a long process. And they said all of the published authors that they work with have taken a long time too. It's just part of the deal generally. And so I'm just going to wait and I'm going to be okay with that. And I'm a really impatient person and I like things to happen quick, but at the end of the day, it's like, why one day I will have this moment of pure joy that I get. I'm like, feel just giddy thinking about it but I will have this day where uh somebody will pick up my book and give me an offer and we will be going through the process and I'll be making decisions about next steps with them and then one day that will happen and it will be amazing and it doesn't have to be today it can be later <laughs> you know and that's okay so just gotta enjoy the journey as they say, enjoy the journey. Woo, time to go get my son from school. So that'll be my exit cue. And uh, wishing you all the luck in your creative endeavors too. And I just hope that we won't give up, none of us. Because some days you just want to, but but no, like no. Because <laughs> why? Why give up? Because then you'll just never know. And so I, for one, am going to plow forward. And I hope that you will too. Until next time, I don't know what I'll talk about next because I don't think we need an update anymore since we already know where we're at. And like my agent said, if like once I get an offer on this, it'll, it will be six months before, like by the time of submission to offer. So since we're not even out on submission yet, like we'll talk about this in like a year <laughs> because it's just, that's where we're at. So um, I'll try to think of something interesting to share with you next time. Bye guys.